Welcome to the Injective Hackathon. I am Chris and I look after the product team at Injective Labs. Today I will talk about launching DeFi product. So first of all, what kind of products can you build on Injective? <coughs> the answer is actually anything. Injective is a layer one blockchain with smart contract support, so you can actually build whatever you want. However, it makes more sense to focus on DeFi applications because after all, Injective is a blockchain built for DeFi. And why is that? Because Injective has plenty of plug and play primitives and features that you can already use out of the box surrounding DeFi. <coughs> so for example, the powerful exchange module is where the unique on-chain matching engine logic and order book exists. So if you are building a DEX, then you can already use this exchange module out of the box. Or if you're building um, some other products such as a trading bot or even a pr payment product, you don't have to worry about integrating with uh, another external exchange or liquidity provider because you can just tap into the liquid markets that already exist in the exchange module you can save a lot of time and just you, you can just worry about your product um, instead of like where where the, where the exchange and liquidity is coming from and you can obviously build cross-chain applications on injective too since there are existing bridge bridging solutions such as wormhole and ibc that are supported here um, and you can build you can you can leverage the arbitrary data feature um, supported by IBC and and wormhole as well. That means that uh, not just um, <coughs> assets can be transferred, data can be transferred, and also um, you can control what happens after your user um, uh, sends the assets or data over to Injective. Right, so for example, you can um, bridge over from uh, Solana and then place a, uh, a a market order on exchange module as well. Right, so you can do a lot of these kind of things out of the box within Injective already, and so you can. Um, that's why you want to build on a DeFi app application on Injective. And so the next topic that I would like to quickly touch on before I go deep into product is the um, is the challenges that you will face when building a Web3 product that may only arise here in the Web3 world, but not in the Web2 world. So first of all, there's the database issue. As we all know, the blockchain is the database, but as a, as, <coughs> as a product person or when you're building a product, you, you have a lot of data that you like to store that is not necessarily on the blockchain, right? And um, so that means that you may want to have your own database too, right? So you have to remember that um, uh, to store your product specific data. And if you're writing your own smart contracts, and if you like to present the information or data on your smart contract, then you will have to use some kind of indexer solutions, right? such as subgraph and whatnot, right? Otherwise, it would be very difficult for your um, product, your application to, to, to present these data or information in front of the user if you don't have this kind of indexer um, solution. So just remember that. Um, then there is data tracking. So in the Web2 world, you can track everything of, like every, every behavior, every movement of a user very easily, right? But in the Web3 world, that's slightly harder. And then there's the small problem of UX, right? So um, people keep complaining like the Web3 is, uh, doesn't have a good UI UX, um, all that. I don't necessarily agree, right? Because Web3, we also have brilliant um, UX, uh, UI UX designers as well. But at the same time, there are some stuff that um, by default, it makes it harder for the Web3 world because, for example, like um, using a wallet to sign 
transaction each time, right? These kind of stuff makes it um, very annoying and difficult to use for some users. So um, yeah, if you're building a Web3 product, like these are the things that like this, this like UX problem is something that you have to um, think about. The next thing is actually the deployment speed, right? Um, so um, in Web3, a lot of the times, if your feature depends on the chain, and <laughs> it's a chain feature that, for example, is not on um, available on mainnet yet, right? So it means that your product cannot go live as well um, without the chain um, being upgraded, right? However, chain upgrade is something that is subject to governance voting. So, and, and, and normally it doesn't happen daily, right? Or even weekly. So it's something that um, you will find as unique in the Web2 or at Web3 world um, uh, compared to Web2. Because whereas in Web2, like you can iterate like these kind of new products really quickly, right? Even daily, you want to make changes. In the Web3 world, you can as well, but only if whatever you want to iterate or change does not involve a hardcore, like a, a chain level feature. And last but not least, another um, uh, a, a challenge that, that you will see in Web3 world is uh, copycats, right? Not saying Web2 does not have copycats, um, but in Web3, like people can just, uh, uh, because your smart contract is, is open source, um, we have seen this before uh, with um, uh, Uniswap and SushiSwap, right? So it's, um, it's quite easy to, to fork um, another project. If your project is successful, right? Fork your um, smart contract code. And um, so there might, be, um, there, there might be copycats coming along like pretty easily, right? So that's why building like a real product that people use um, is important right and um, and I guess we can we can talk about that now right I hope I didn't put you off building a uh, web3 product at all right so now let's go ahead and talk about building a product so mainly there are uh, three questions that we need to ask right so who how and why right so the first question is who are your users right so in the crypto world, we, we normally, we, we define, well, it's not, not just the crypto world, but uh, as, as a product person, we think of um, the user uh, space as a spectrum, right? So like, um, so you can clearly define like which part of, uh, which, tar which user audience you're trying to target, right? And in terms of crypto, like, the spectrum is um, a lot. Oftentimes, it's defined by the by the knowledge of um, crypto. Um, so you have the um, totally new, like to, like people who who don't understand it at all, right? Um, the crypto ignorance, right? On the one end, and on the other hand, like would be the proper degens, right? Like they they don't don't trust the banks, right? And they um, they hold everything in crypto and everything is just um, uh, DeFi, 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 right? And then in the in the middle ground, um, those are like, uh, you can think of them are the guys who are using CeFi, right? But also like uh, uh, maybe starting to use some DeFi stuff as well, right? And um, what we what we can see from this, uh, from the user base, is that um, usually, um, as you know more about crypto, right? Um, so first of all, you you're new to crypto, right? Um, most of the time, you will um, access CFI centralized exchanges first, right? Unless you're in some countries where it's impossible to um, even deal with CFI, then those are actually like great product market fit for, for DeFi users, right? But in in most cases, CeFi, it's the um, 
is the first place for a user, right? As they as they start to learn about crypto, they go to C5 first, right? And as the knowledge within C5, uh, well, within uh, of of crypto currency um, grows, then eventually they will start um, moving into DeFi, right? So this this uh, the, the the spectrum of the crypto user, right? And if you're building a product, it's important to define um, who you're trying to target, right? Because um, it's impossible to to have something that works for um, like these, th for example, these three groups that I I put on this slides, right? Because um, they they if you have something that works for the newbies, right? The DJs probably think, oh, it's um, it's totally not cool. It's not Web three at all. Like and and it's like so, um, yeah, we, we don't like it, right? But on the flip side, if you go all the way for the DGENs, right? So then the newbies or even the C five guys will like will ask the, like will will be totally lost, right? Because of like the um, as mentioned in the previous slides, right? Like maybe the UX becomes very um, DGEN focused, right? So um, as a product builder. Um, Think about um, the user and the audience that you're trying to address, and really focus on them, right? Instead of, uh, especially you, when you're building from scratch, uh, as as a as a as a early product, right? There's no point of building something that one size fits all. Um, it's way easier to focus on one audience first. And then the next topic. Um, the next question to ask is how are the users using your app, right? So actually on um, in, in DeFi or actually maybe specifically for on, on Injective, right? So like all of the interactions of uh, a DeFi product involves a wallet, right? Like you, you have to sign transactions using a wallet, right? So this is like the, 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 the the most key element of like defining how your users are using the, the, the product, right? Because they, they cannot use a DeFi product without a wallet, right? And so like on the topic of wallet, then like, especially on Injective, you have to think of like, how do you want to, which kind of products, uh, so w which wallets do you want to use? Um, is it, or you can use both types, right? Ethereum based and Cosmos based, or you can just use one. Right. For the Ethereum based wallets, <coughs> so for example, like MetaMask, it has way more users compared to um, the Cosmos based wallet. However, the um, there's a um, inferior user experience, um, specifically on injective only. Right, is that um, the injective balance is not shown on MetaMask. Right, so if you are building some a, a product that based on that is going to use MetaMask, then you might suddenly have to th start thinking about showing the balance um, on inside your product as well, right? Because otherwise, your your users might have a um, blind spot in term in terms of like, oh, actually, like how much. Like what? What's my balance, right? How much assets do I have on Injective, right? I cannot see on MetaMask, right? And I cannot see on your product, right? So, this is something that um, one should consider. So, Cosmos-based wallet um, such as Kepler, um, Injective, can be shown on there, right? So it makes it easier in that sense. But obviously, the downside of Kepler. Is or or, or, no, or or Cosmos based wallets is that it has way less um, users compared to MetaMask, right? Next question is to um, to ask is why are your users using your product? And in fact, um, this is the most important question, right? So, what is the problem you want to solve? You're trying to solve. Right, and if you cannot answer that question, then you should question whether you should build your product at all. Right, then the next question is like, how is your product different and unique? 
it doesn't you you don't have to build something that's totally new right so for example um telegram is not the first um messaging app in the world right but it still succeeded right because it has a niche so when you build a product it's important to think about like what is your niche what is your something that's so special about you that could make you better than the other person or the other product in the space already right and it everything ties back to like so having a product vision is therefore very important right because it helps you to define um, which audience you're trying to target um, define the UX um, well the design and also the the, the user experience uh, the overall direction and also the that even the narratives for your own users, right? So, if your product vision is clear, you you attract the right users, and your users when they start using it, they also like find it very clear. So this is a a a a positive loop. And on the topic of why using a, a product, right? Um, something that's quite common and unique in in the crypto web, web 3 world is rewards right um, however if your product if if the if the answer of your previous question of why using a product why using your product is only because of rewards then it really is a, is a double-edged sword right because a lot of DeFi apps use rewards to kickstart the product this is this is great, right? This is a great tool to get initial adoption. But if that's the only reason, um, then these users that you attract to it are not loyal at all. So as long as there's another similar product out there that offers better rewards, because you one day eventually your rewards will run out, right? Then then your users will just leave and go to um, the other product, right? So we call this like a, a rewards war and a race to the bottom, right? So it's just people trying to, because it means that you, you're, just, you're just attracting users who are not, may not be really using your, pro, uh, your product, but it's just there to get the rewards. And you're in trouble, right? If, if that's the only way of how you differentiate your product. And it means that you're not solving a real problem as well. So the next section is like actually like going through two case studies um, uh, of like Web3 products. And, um, and the first one is actually um, Uniswap, right? So it's a, it's a great product which um, withstood the rewards war that I, w I was just talking about, right? So um, it's a product that like one product um, similar uh, user experience across many chains, right? So that's already very clear. Like they have a very defined user experience. Um, so in this, initially, a lot of users left when other products, well, namely at first is Sushi, but later on there were <coughs> a lot of similar products offering um, better rewards as well. But eventually, like they all came back to Uniswap. Why? Because they have a first mover advantage. Um, they have a like they, they were actually like setting this whole like um, swap LP token like user experience trend setter, right? Um, and so like they, they, they were driving the, the whole um, the, the, the whole space. But most importantly, they're actually solving a real problem. That's why people came back to them even at the end of the day, like in the end, if there's no like no more rewards, right? So they were solving a problem where it's like there are some assets or tokens or coins that are not available elsewhere but is available like th it becomes a a a go-to place where all these like small smaller tokens would go to uniswap to launch right and the liquidity is there right so this is a great product that um there's a great example of a good pro product that withstood the rewards war another case study is helix actually right um uh, so uh, it's a product built by Injective Labs um, on Injective, right? So it's built on Injective's DeFi primitives. 
um, the case study here is actually like um, Helix has a very focused UX for a targeted audience. So if we go back to the um, um, previous slides that where I talk about like um, thinking about the spectrum. So Helix, we are targeting the the middle part of the spectrum. So we're actually trying to um, recreate a lot of the CFI user experience. Um, and also like later on, we'll have like more and more features that like the CFI users are used to and will be slowly replicated on Helix as well, right? Um, this way, um, because like Helix is very focused on trying to gain adoption and then like move people from C5 over to D5, right? So that's the vision of Helix. Um, and also therefore we target this space, right? And, and therefore it, it makes it very clear what we're trying to do. It makes the, the users trying to onboard also very clear what we're trying to do as well. So in conclusion, um, actually now is the best time to build, right? So uh, during bull market is actually quite difficult to build because you get distracted by a lot of noise. Right now during bear or like late bear market is actually the best time to build, right? Because you can focus on really um, building product that is solving your user's problem, right? And, and, and not just rewards, right? And um, one thing that I always like, um, uh, it's kind of like my motto is that we should build a product that isn't just going to explode during the bull market, um, but can keep hold of the users during the bear market as well, right? Because that way, you know that you are really solving a problem. And that's what, um, what great product should strive for. Thank you very much for your time. Um, thanks for listening and um, happy building. Thanks.